Now to start the service of your trailer mate we need to remove both shaft sleeves by removing all three Allen key studs. Also at the base of the unit is a 10 millimeter bolt that also needs to be removed. And now this is done in order to successfully remove the shaft sleeves. Taking the unit from the workbench, we place it upright into the vise and remove the air release valve, this is part number 23, in order to check the oil. Now we do this by using a long thin object such as a welding rod as shown here. And now ideally, the level of the oil should be about 20 to 25 millimeters below your finger. And now that the oil check has been completed, it's very important to replace the old O-ring on your air release valve. This O-ring is part 22 in your service kit, as you can see here. Now remember to use a high quality hydraulic jack oil when the need arises to top up or refill the oil reservoir. When filling up with oil, use a pop top bottle as shown here on screen and always make sure to wipe up any spillage. And now that the oil is being taken care of, it's time to replace the air release valve. Remembering to tighten down firmly with an Allen key, but not too tight so as not to distort the O-ring. Moving to step six now, which is the changing of the release valve seal. Now we do this by unscrewing the PK screw enough in order to remove the release valve from the unit completely. Put a rag over the air release valve. This is so as not to lose the ball bearing, which is under pressure. Remove the dust cover now. And with a pair of long nose pliers, remove the inner seal. Now just take a mental note that this seal has a downward facing taper. To check that the ball bearing is there, we flip the unit over, there it is, then we put it back. And now we replace parts six and seven. You'll notice the new seal on the right has plenty of thread compared to the old. Now we can insert the new seal tapered side down and carefully seat it and then drive it all the way home. Now this step is followed up by the replacement of the dust cover. Now we replace the release valve into the new seal. Now it's important not to push but to screw through the thread. Continue to screw down until it touches the ball bearing. To complete step six, replace and tighten PK screw so as to allow three full turns back of the release valve. And now we move on to replace the shaft collar O-rings. Taking an adjustable spanner, we undo the nut. Slide the nut over the shaft, but don't remove the shaft itself. Having removed the nut, we now proceed to remove the three O-rings within the shaft collar. Now that's one, that's two, and that's three. Dispose of old O-rings immediately. Wash the collar in solvent. Make sure you dry it thoroughly before proceeding. We now take parts 33 and insert them onto the hexagonal end of the shaft collar. Now there are two parts 33. We then turn it over so that we can insert part 33A onto the inner ledge of the shaft collar. Now it's always a good idea to lubricate the O-rings within the shaft collar with good quality jack oil. Now this will allow the collar to slide easier over the shaft. Give it a bit of a tap and tighten. Now it's important not to over tighten as the collar is made of cast and it may crack. Step eight now, and this is removing the linkages. We do this by extracting the split pins and we use a pair of long nose pliers for this job. We ensure that the release valve and the air release valve are both closed to minimize oil loss during this procedure. 
Now that the linkages are removed, we return the unit to the vise. Best to keep in mind that the release valve is to be on one jaw of the vise and the linkage is on the other jaw. We then take a 7 8 ring spanner and we use this in order to loosen the piston assembly. We now return the unit to the upright position in the vise before removing the piston assembly completely and we do this in order to minimize any oil loss. Using a pair of long nose pliers, we carefully remove the check valve. We wash it in solvent until both internal bearings rattle freely. Now remove the O-ring and the seal collar. Step 9 now, and this procedure involves removing the piston itself. Step 10 now is removal of both internal O-rings from the piston housing. Now it's important to dispose of the old O-rings immediately. Remove the seal and the O-ring from the base of the piston and wash the piston and housing in solvent, remembering to dry them thoroughly. Turning now to our Trailermate service kit, we replace our new O-rings into the slots inside the piston housing using a small screwdriver. Now just work the screwdriver around to ensure that the O-rings are seated in their appropriate slots correctly. Apply a small amount of oil to the O-rings. and replace the piston through the top of the piston housing, ensuring to push the piston all the way through, as you can see here. Take the new seal and O-ring from the service pack and push them in place over the top, making sure that it passes the collar. So then we tap it on the bench a few times so that it becomes flush. Moving forward, we replace the seal collar and new O-ring part 15 in your kit, we push the O-ring over the bottom of the piston housing up against the seal collar. We replace the check valve now, making sure that the two holes are at the top, and then we just drop it in. Slowly undo the air release valve until the well is full of oil. Now the reason for this is to avoid air locks. Now taking the piston assembly, we screw it back. And then we clean up any excess oil prior to finally tightening the assembly in place. Now the piston assembly needs to be very tight upon completion. So to do this, we take it from the vertical to the horizontal position in the vise. And once again, use the ring spanner to accomplish this. And now we take care of the linkages. We place the unit in the upright position in the vise, align the holes where the pins go with a screwdriver, insert the linkage pins, and using a pair of long nose pliers, we reinsert the split pins to hold them in place. You've made it this far, time to put it to the test. Before moving on to the second part of the test, which is trying it on a trailer or caravan, we need to replace the exterior shaft and the three Allen key studs. These hold it in place and tighten with an Allen key and finally attach the clamp and tighten. Now place a block of wood under the shaft and jack the van. Leave the jack in place for 10 to 15 minutes and check for any loss of height or oil leaks. Release the jack slowly and after a successful test return to the workbench for final assembly. 
Now after double checking for oil that leaks, remove the clamp, turn the unit over and loosen all Allen key studs. Step 22. Insert the inner shaft cover and replace the 10mm bolt and spring washer into the base of the main shaft. And finally, tighten all the Allen key studs.